Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Listen, I want to get right into the scripture because there's something so important I need to share with you all. I'm going to read to you from John chapter 17. This was the last prayer that God, that Jesus says to God right before he is arrested in the garden of Gethsemane. I'm reading from the New King James Version, but feel free to review this. Please review this on your own um, and read it in whatever version is easier for you to understand. John 17, Jesus prays for himself. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I've glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me and they have received them and have known surely that I came forth from you and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours and all mine are yours and yours are mine, mine and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be as one, that they may be one. I'm sorry. Now, now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And that was Judas. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. <clears throat> I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I, have also, I also have sent them into the world. So I read that again. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe, who will believe in me through their word. <laughs> I do not pray for these alone, not just for the, not for those who are saved, but also for those who will believe in me through their word that they all may be one as you father are in me and I in you and they that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me I have given them that they may be one just as we are one 
I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name, and will declare it that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. Guys, John 17 is so profound. Read all of this. Go back and read it, guys. Read it, guys. Read it. We are not of this world. So when the word of God says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind, this prayer that God that Jesus says right before he's arrested in the garden of Gethsemane tells you right there what our purpose is as believers. He has put his word in us. There are those of us that's been established from the foundation of the earth, that a foundation of the world that he was going to call us out of darkness into his light. And he's going to put us in this world just as the father put Jesus into this world to bring people to him. And that is why we're here guys. We're here in these last days to tell people about Jesus, to tell people about the truth. That's why it says, guys, in Ephesians 5 and 14, I believe it says, Awake, O sleeper, and raise up, rise from the dead. Awake, O sleeper. There's some people, they're wide asleep. They're wide asleep. They're walking and they, they're believers now. They just, they know the word, they see the word manifesting, they see the state of the world and how things are changing, the state of the church, the belief systems, everything that's slowly taking over and going against Christianity and going against God's word. And yet they're just, they're just on autopilot. They're asleep. They're ignoring the truth and embracing the darkness because it's easier to do. But God has sent us into this world, guys, to do a work. I need you to go back and read John chapter 17 in, in its entirety so you can see the last thing that Jesus prayed to the Father, asking him to give us the strength to be able to stand and to resist in these last days, to stand up for his words, to stand up for righteousness, to bring other people to him through how we conduct ourselves and how we love one another and how the truth of God is in us. This, he says over and over again that we are not of this world. We are not of this world. So when people are trying to tell you to try to relax and to, to get to know people and you know, oh, we don't need to be, we don't need to be this holy. We don't need to be this strict. We don't need to have such clean delineations. That goes against everything here in John chapter 14. We are supposed to stand out as a light in this world, guys. Stand out as a light. You are not of this world. You need to wake up. Just as our Heavenly Father is not of this world, just as Jesus is not of this world, He has made it clear that we are not. We have a specific job and a specific thing that we're supposed to do, guys, which is winning souls, that turning other people to believe in Him. And the way they're going to know that is through our love and through the way we conduct ourselves and walking by the Holy Spirit in this work and in this time and in this life and in this temporary journey that we have on this earth. Guys, people are getting so caught up in all the craziness. People are getting caught up in church, the antics of church, the dramas of church, the bells and whistles, the singing and the dancing and the cheering of church, the pom-pom sections of church. But people are not truly going out there and telling people about Jesus Christ. 
our biggest nemesis has become other believers, other Christians who will try to cut you down for preaching and teaching the word of God, who try to hunt you down and, and break up your Bible studies and break up your gatherings in your home because they feel like you belong in this section, in this sector. But guys, listen, we have to wake up. You have to wake up and get power and get empowered by the Holy Spirit. If you don't, you're going to be left behind. You're going to find out as these days get darker and things get worse that you will have no power within you because you've been sitting wasting time going to church Sunday after Sunday, just going there for, you know, razzle dazzle and nothing else. You're getting upset and not going back to church because somebody's sitting in your seat. You are fighting and arguing about who the pastor let make the banana pudding last week. All these petty things. People are getting caught up in who said what, who did what, and who got the best choirs. But in the meantime, John 17 shows us clearly what it is that we're supposed to be doing. We need to wake up, guys. A lot of you are wide asleep. You're wide asleep. You're walking. You're praising God. You're saying you know him, but you're not walking in his truths. You're compromising. You have ops, You have uh, removed sound doctrine. You are walking in heresy. And you're making the things of this world to be the things to be attained. This thing about kingdom, living kingdom now, that is not of God. God did not promise us any kingdom now. The kingdom that we will get will come at the end. Yes, there are things that God wants you to have in this life to enjoy. But this thing where we're chasing money, that's not what it is. The kingdom now is the kingdom of this world. The kingdom now is the, is the kingdoms that Satan showed Jesus in the wilderness that said, all this world, all these kingdoms and their glory will I give to you if you have bowed down to me, if you will bow down and worship me. And there are many who are bowed down and worship and you're getting the kingdom now. You can keep your kingdom living in kingdom now, now, because I'm going to wait for the true kingdom that is to come. But until then, my job is to preach his word, to teach his word, to tell people about Jesus Christ, to be prepared to be ostracized and to be castigated and to be persecuted for righteousness sake. These things by the power of the Holy Spirit, we must endure believers, the true elect, the true sons and daughters of God. These are the things that we're going to go through. And then we will get our crown. You see, a lot of people wear the crown of this world today and get in the kingdom living and kingdom now, which comes from Satan himself. This kingdom living kingdom now overrides the word of God. This kingdom living kingdom now that causes us to have to compromise and to be rubbing shoulders with sinners and not leading. It's one thing to be with the sinners if you are being the, the leader and landing an impact, but they are being led astray. You see daily and, and how, how each, as we get closer to the end, you see how the church is conforming to the world. So it tells you who is actually in the driver's seat. Guys, wake up, wake up, wake up and see what it is that God has in store for you and for you to do today. The battle is now we have to get ready for war and the things of Christ. It's, a, it's not a battle against flesh and blood. It's not against people, but it's against principalities and powers and the rules of the darkness of this world. A lot of the principalities and powers are being manifested in a lot of things today. There's a lot of people that's opposing Christianity and opposing believers and followers of Christ. But Satan don't even care about these men and women that he's using to do these things. Because the ultimate goal is to use them and when he gets done with them, that they will be thrown into the lake of fire along with him for all eternity. He cares nothing about them but to get them to destroy Christians, to destroy all the, the things that are moral, the things that are godly. They're being used and the thing about it is they don't even know. Guys, time to wake up. A lot of y'all are wide asleep. Wake up. Open your eyes. Study the scripture. See what it is that Christ has put in place for us, what we're supposed to be doing. Stop getting caught up in all this, this, this stuff of church. It's not about church, guys. It's about winning souls. People are in the church buildings all the time and not winning no souls. Bringing people into their church and turn them into the passion that these people had for Christ. It changes and it becomes a club. It becomes a place to just hang out. It's a place to look pretty and get married and have kids and be in auxiliaries and sit there and 
and, and stare down at other people who's running the race for God and saying that they're out of line and, and they have no covering. I beg to differ. I'm covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. You're going to lose family. You're going to lose friends. I'm sure there's people who sit and look at my videos and talk about, oh, girl, she's gone so far. Oh, she's gone off the deep end. Keep saying that. Not a problem. I will gladly have you speak against me. I'll gladly have you talk about me because at least I'm doing something for the kingdom of God. I'll gladly have you mock me and scorn me and talk about me because guess what? I'm confident because everything you do against me or any other believer of Christ lines up with the word of God, lines up with the things that's going to happen in the last days. And so in that, I'm satisfied because it lets me know I'm on the right track. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is not for everybody. This is not for those who want to fight over who's going to sit in the front seat as church at church. This is not for those who's fighting over who's the armor bearer for the pastor's wife or the pastor. This is not for those who's running and trying to figure out who's going to be looking at them, who's who they're going to get married to, running to singles groups, trying to get caught up in this and that, and trying to be accepted and 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 trying to make banana pudding and trying to plait the pastor's wife's hair. This is not for you. This is for you that you have been awake and God's, God has opened your eyes and shown you the things that's to come. Those that God has taken the scales from off your eyes and your ears. Read Mark chapter 7, Luke, John, I'm sorry, read the book of John chapter 17. Be be reassured that you're on the right track. Be reassured when you are ostracized. Be reassured when you are demonized. Be reassured when people say that you're crazy. Be reassured where the other believers do their classic quiet Christian moves. They get real quiet on you. But trust me, that quietness, that silence is very loud. They're busy talking. They're busy doing other things. But it's fine. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything shall be added to you. Make your face like a flint. Make yourself like a flint so you can be strong and you can move in the power of his might. You're not going to be able to do that sitting and watching Netflix for hours. You're not going to be able to do that if you're not fasting in this flesh. You're not putting this flesh under subjection. You're not going to do that if you're not going in the presence of the Lord because you're going to need his strength in these last days. To keep your armor in place. You're not going to just be able to click your heels and suddenly you're powered up. There's a lot of people who feel like they're going to be able to shake like Samson in the last days. And you're going to find yourself so, find yourself a loss. There are a lot of Christians today who are not Christians but actually footmen for the Antichrist. Who's going to come against the true followers of Christ, guys. They're here and they're in place to do the work of the Antichrist. To prepare those who... Who are really trying to do the things of God. To follow and to take the mark of the beast. These Christians who feel that they're hearing from God. And they're they're following this light that is in fact darkness. They're the ones that's going to be left behind. And they're going to be left behind for a purpose. They're going to be left behind to convince other people. Who's going to believe that they're followers of Christ. To take the mark of the beast. We have to stand up. We have to get in this word. We have to get into the presence of the Lord so he can get us empowered and prepared because the days are coming to a close. The day is coming when God is coming to get his church. Look at the condition of the world. Look at everything that's going on all around you guys. The time is coming. The end is near. It's important that you're getting out and you're doing the things that God has told you to do. It's important that you don't allow fear to cause you to stand before God in that day and tell him why you didn't use the talents that he gave you. Oh, how you were so afraid. Don't be like the parable that Jesus told his disciple that you had something to do and you let time go and the and the God comes back and you stand there and tell him why you didn't do the things he told you to do. Why you didn't start that YouTube channel. Why didn't start that group? Why didn't start that in-home Bible study? Why didn't start that in-home fellowship? Guys, the days are winding down. Soon enough, we are going to see God in the air calling us up. And guys, even if that's not the case, one thing for sure, there's a day that you and I will give our last breath. And we want to know that when our soul leaves our body, that the angels of the Lord is taking us to the place of rest until the time that Jesus raises us up on judgment day. That is coming. Guys, don't, don't be, don't be. Oh, wake up. Y'all are, y'all are wide asleep. Wide asleep. Wake up, guys. Wake up, guys. 
We have a purpose. We are not of this world, so we need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit to do the things that he has called us to do and to win as many souls for him as possible before he returns or before we return to the dust. All right, guys, don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe. Peace out.